Well, the, the most obvious challenge post-September the 11th is the, the civil liberties assault, um, which is really an intensification of an assault on the right to protest and essentially the right to dissent that predates September the 11th. And it has to do with an equation and a kind of, uh, of and a kind of a bundling of activism with terrorism. And that uh, is taking place in law with laws that are seemingly just sloppily written, but I think quite deliberately uh, blurring the lines between legitimate uh, civil disobedience and acts of terror against the state. Um, and this is happening around the world. One of the ways in which people have been active forced their way into the global debate about what kind of globalization we want has been to protest outside of summits. And one of the things that activists have done is they have uh, brought, blocked routes into the summits. Now, this is very annoying for delegates. Um, it's often already illegal under law uh, uh, to, to it's, you know, you, it's everything from a public nuisance to you know, obstruction of a roadway. So the issue is not whether or not this is legal. Many activists are willing to get arrested uh, for their activities. The issue is whether or not it's, it's a terrorist act, whether it's akin to hijacking a plane. And what these laws are doing is they're putting those act, acts of civil disobedience into the same legal category as, um, as hijacking a plane and, and putting much stiffer uh, sentences on, on those acts and also... Um, uh, um, well, they're also, depending on the law, uh, all kinds of rights are being waived, uh, um, some of them with sunset clauses, some of them not. Uh, and if these activities are indeed terrorist acts, then that means that activists are also losing their rights in court and so on.